Well, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. We're going to jump straight into this. Lord knows I do not claim to be the world's greatest preacher, and most of the time when I do preach, I'm just a couple of decibels louder and I'm still teaching. But uh, tonight, mostly, we're just going to let Scripture talk for itself, because honestly, that's what it does anyway. But tonight, we're going to talk about humanity's hamster wheel. And if you've never had a hamster, they get on those wheels and they keep running and running and running and they don't go anywhere. Amen. Who's got 2 Timothy, the 3rd chapter, and the 13th verse? You're coming right up behind him then. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Deceiving and being deceived. Have you ever seen a time like we're living in right now for evil men and seducers waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived? But even though we see this going on now, Jonathan, do you have Ecclesiastes 1 and 9? The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. There's no new thing under the sun. You see a bunch of corrupt politicians in office right now? And I'm sorry, I mean, I was thinking about this the other day. Honestly, if they were going to nuke Washington, D.C., I hope they give us enough warning so we can get the two or three honest people out of there before they do it. They shouldn't be hard to find because that's about all there are, just two or three honest people. And the rest of them are just a bunch of lying politicians. But there's nothing new under the sun. And where we find ourselves today, they found themselves a millennia ago. And they found themselves two millennia ago. This is constantly happening. And that's where we are. So, as I said, we're going to let Scripture talk for itself largely tonight. We're going to go to Genesis and the sixth chapter. And we are going to pick up in verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. In this time, we, we know that the whole earth was full of violence. Okay? This was uh, approximately 1,656 years from Adam. You get this when you add up the, the different lifespans of the people that are mentioned. So we've got 16, 1656. We've got almost two millennia of time from Adam. And then we've got all these evil people that are all over the face of the earth. Not just a culture. It said the whole earth was filled with violence. So a whole earth problem requires a whole earth Solution! Amen. What did God do? You guys know what He did. God flooded the earth. God, except for the eight souls and the animals that were in the ark, 
God wiped them all out and we could go down rabbit trails and we could talk about DNA manipulation and everything else. And I believe it. I really do. I believe it. I believe a lot of the things that they dig down in the soil and they find these bones of these freaky looking creatures, I think a lot of it was the devil messing with the DNA. And I think that's why God wiped them off the face of the earth. Guess what they're doing now? <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun. Amen. When I was a young man, I guess 17, 18, 19 years old, we had Dolly the sheep. You remember Dolly? Because Dolly was a creation of the scientists. That was the first cloned animal that came to fruition and lived that they tell us about. There's no telling how long they've been doing stuff like that. But they let it be known that they could mess with DNA, that they could manipulate the plans for life and create life out of life that's already been. The, the really scary thing is, uh, you know, I've never seen the movie all the way through, to be honest with you, but I understand the plot of Jurassic Park is they got DNA out of mosquitoes that have been trapped in uh, sap or something like that. That's actually not too far-fetched. They have dug down into the ground and some of the dinosaur bones, you know, millions and millions of years ago, they have found soft tissue inside the bones because the scientists are a bunch of liars. Because it wasn't millions and millions of years ago. It was thousands and thousands of years ago, and there's a huge difference. But they have found soft tissue inside these bones that they can extract the DNA from. There's nothing new under the sun. There's just some kind of disconnect in the mind of man there's nothing wrong with exploring what God created. Okay? And, and I can't remember the exact way it's worded, but it's the honor of a king to uh, find things out, to, to, to find a secret out. So there's nothing wrong. I think God might even be pleased with it when we care enough about creation to look into it and to see how He did it. But when man wants to start fooling with things himself, and wants to start making things himself and start splicing this genes with that genes. My goodness, God told him, don't sow your field with mixed seed. You think he's wanting them to take his DNA out there and start making these freaky little animals? There's nothing new under the sun. We're building on something. Stay with me. Genesis, the 11th chapter... Give me verses 1 through 9. And the whole earth was of one language, mm -hmm. and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime have they for mortar. And they say, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Okay, hold that and mark your place, because we're going right back to it. I want you to think about this. This, I think I even have it written down. This is approximately 100 years after the flood. That's all the time it took for mankind to unlearn what they had learned from when God wiped out the world before. But the point that I'm wanting to point to and say, looky here, is man was all of one language. They could communicate. This one might understand something over here, and this one might, but they could communicate back and forth, and they could take their eyes and put together. And that's why God said nothing will be withholding from them. Well, the problem is the majority of people are just like they were in Noah's day. The thoughts 
the intents of their hearts were just evil. So God says, okay, well, I, I, I fluttered them out the last time. I took care of the wider problem. I've got them all right here right now, so I'm going to do something else. So what does God do, Josiah? Go to, let us go down. And there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So they built up the society. We have Nimrod coming into the picture here. He was the rebellious one. We, we've got Nimrod comes up, rebels against God. These people start building this tower, and Josephus tells us there's a little more involved. That the reason why they were using pitch and slime as mortar was to make it waterproof. So if God broke his word, which they didn't know God, but if God broke his word, they could go into this waterproof tower and they could climb up the inside of it and old Nimrod could go up to the top and put his finger in God's face. Do you really think God's that dumb, Nimrod? So God just says, okay. Poof. Scatters their languages. And they want to say, well, you know, I mean, that, that's just a parable. That didn't really happen. You know what kills the linguists? They have come to the place, after studying the languages of the world, they have come to the place where they finally have had to admit that all languages come from a single root language. This happened. Mm -hmm. This isn't a proverb. It's not a parable. This is what happens when man thinks that they are bigger than God. When man starts puffing his chest out and starts rubbing up against God and saying, you listen here, we don't need you anymore. God says, yeah, right. And that's what happened. God scattered their language. 300 years. Let's go to 300 years from there. Let's go over to Genesis. The 19th chapter. We're going to pick up in the 9th verse. And I promised you a hamster wheel today, but I believe you're probably already seeing a pattern, right? We, we know that Eastern thought, including the Hebrews, they look for patterns in things. That's how they understand that which has been is going to be again, again. Because there's nothing new under the sun. It's always repeating itself. Where we have Western thought, and we want to know why. We want to understand cause and effect. And I'm not saying one way of thinking is any better than the other way of thinking. It, it's just we have examples where this has happened not just to individual societies, but this has happened over the whole earth time and time again. And the hamster's on that wheel and he just keeps running and keeps running and keeps running and keeps running. And keeps running. Every single time. Stay with me. Stay with me. Genesis, the 19th chapter, we're going to pick up in the 9th verse. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow, talking about Lot, I didn't want to read the whole thing, came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man, and uh, even Lot and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. So the angels smite these flaming homosexuals with blindness, yeah. and instead of saying, uh-oh, we're in trouble and trying to find their way home, they're still trying to get yeah. to the door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perverse and wickedness. And you think it was just something in Sodom? No. I, I hear stories about these people that go to places like Los Angeles, and they go to San Francisco, and they get a little too close to the homeless encampments, and they come out of the cities like that. I mean, it's just, there's some kind of insanity, some kind of demon in these people. 
But it's not just in San Francisco. It's not just in Los Angeles. It's in Greenville. It's in Charleston. Yeah. Don't believe me? Look up the drag queen story hour. That's not just over on the left coast. That's right there in Greenville, South Carolina, too. Take your kids and let them sit on some child molester's lap because he's dressed like a woman. And half the time it turns out that that's exactly what they have been convicted of in the past. Because some good citizen will take a picture of the license plate and say, Officer. And then that pervert ends up going back to jail. We, we are getting back to this place again. Okay? That, that's what I'm trying to help you to understand. And we're not stopping there tonight. We're, we're not stopping there tonight. But this constantly happens. And it constantly gets overthrown. History, the, just the ones we know about, it is just full of empires that have risen. And then they all go nuts. And then they fall. Rome is probably the most well documented out of all of them. They start out sincere. They start out trying to do something for the good of their people. They start out good, I mean the honest people. And then by the time it's over with, scum always rises to the top. You always have. The good people don't want any part of it. And the scum gets in there and they rise to the top and they rule everything. And everything that these hardworking people have worked for underneath, they take. I wasn't joking about a couple honest people in Washington. Rand Paul. I don't know. Do you know who Rand Paul is? Rand, Rand Paul's a senator. He's a senator in Kentucky. Ron Paul's son, who was the last presidential candidate I was excited about. Ron Paul's son. He said, uh, no, that $40 billion in Ukraine, we're not just going to send it to Ukraine. We need some oversight. You want to know the problem is? That $40 billion, while we have no formula on the shelves in the United States of America, while we've got people that are starving to death here, they're wanting to send that $40 billion over there to help them kill people. But at the same time, they're trying to help kill those people. A lot of it's going to get funneled back to those same corrupt politicians. Now, I want to be honest with you. They say, it's okay, brother, I'll tell you what, get out the vote, yeah! Well, okay, let's go back to 2016. The Republicans, which are supposed to be the good guys, held the presidency, they held the Senate, they held the Congress, and they didn't do a thing. They fought. That's what they did. They fought because that's what they're going to do. And I don't think it was a sincere fight. I think it's because they are just as corrupt as the demon crabs. Birds of a feather flock together and they roost in Washington, D.C. Now ask me if I care. Make it just as bad as you want to. Turn up the heat, baby. Because I'll tell you what, Jesus is coming back. Amen. Jesus yeah. is coming back. Yeah. And they're not going to have to worry about it any longer. Nope. They're not going to be able to start these stupid wars with these little countries. They're not going to be able to go up there and poke the bear anymore. Amen. Because God is not just going to be in the throne of heaven. God will be on the yeah. throne yeah. of the earth. Yeah. Amen. Jesus. That's right. That's where this is going tonight. I'm sick of this. Yeah. Turn that heat up. Yeah. You get the most corrupt politician in the I'll vote for him. <laughs> because it's going to get better when my Lord comes back. Yeah. Yeah. We are on the hamster wheel. Amen. Mankind, I don't know if they're too dumb to see it or just too corrupt. But we are on the hamster wheel. But Jesus is getting ready to rip the hamster wheel off. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides, son-in-law, and thy sons, and thy daughters? And whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place 
because of the cry of them, the cry of who? The cry of the wicked people. They're so nuts. They're, their cry reached heaven. Well, think about that. We think about people being oppressed and reaching heaven with their cries. Their sinfulness reached God. God's, I've had enough of this. I've had enough of this. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which buried his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. Go out and witness. <laughs> you seem as one that mocks. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to go down that rabbit trail right now. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which no, I already read that, verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth uh, and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, uh, escape. Let, let, let's move on down here. Let's go to verse 20. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape hither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, that's got to be a typo. It should be they, I believe. But anyway, see, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for which thou hast spoken. Anyway, verse 23, the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. It said it was well watered like the garden of God. It was like a tropical paradise. And now people say, well, yeah, but that's just, you know, it's all allegorical. No, they found them. They found the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's not allegorical. It's rather sulfury. Amen. Because God did exactly what he said he was going to do. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because at that time the society had gotten so bad. But God didn't destroy the societies that were around them that weren't so bad. He destroyed the heart of the matter because they were the ones that were wicked. God's just. The wicked is who gets it. God is just. Okay, let's not slow down. Nahum, third chapter. Pick up the first verse. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. The noise of a whip, and the noise of the rattling of the wheels, and of the prancing horses, and of the jumping chariots. The horseman lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear, and there is a multitude of slain, and a great number of carcasses, and there is none end of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts, that selleth nations through her whoredoms, and families through her witchcrafts. The mistress of witchcrafts. What does he in? What, what does he send the, 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 the plagues? What does he send the, the bowls of wrath on at the end in the book of Revelation? They repented not of their sorceries. Same thing that Nahum, same, same, same thing that Nineveh did, that Nahum was talking about here. God is just. If we do the same sin that they were doing, then we will suffer the same punishment yeah. that they suffered because God is just. Yeah. Go ahead. The old, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will shew the nations thy nakedness, and the kingdoms thy shame. And I will cast abominable filth upon thee, and make thee vile, 
it will set thee as a gazing star, and it shall come to pass that all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee, and say, Nineveh is laid waste, who will bemoan her? When shall I seek comforters for thee? Art thou better than populous, populous no? Populous no, it was a city in Egypt. Okay. That was situated among the rivers that had the waters round about it, whose rampart was the sea, and her wall was from the sea. Ethiopia and Egypt were her strength, and it was infinite. Uh, Put and Lubin were thy helpers. Yet she carried away, she went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of all the streets, and they cast lots for her honorable men. And all her great men were bound in chains. Thou also shalt be drunken, thou shalt be hid, thou also shalt seek strength because of the enemy. And all, all thy strongholds shall be like fig trees with the first strike figs. If they be shaken, they shall even fall into the mouth of the eater. Behold, thy people in the midst are, of thee are women, thy, the gates of thy land shall be set wide, open unto, unto thine enemies. The fire shall devour thou art. Draw thee waters for the siege. Fortify thy strongholds. Go into clay, and tread the mortar. Make strong and brick him. There shall be the fire devour thee. The sword shall cut thee off. It shall eat thee up like the canker worm. Make thyself many as the canker worm. Make thyself many as the locust. So what happened here? My understanding is, uh, do, do you know who the Medes were? I know you've heard Medes and Persians before. Do, do you know who the Kurds are now? Yeah. Okay, the Medes are still there. They're just the Kurds. Okay? So what happened is the Medes came in their army and they came into Nineveh and they weren't slapping people with fishes. I had to get a veggie tail joke in there. I'm sure you'll understand. But they weren't slapping people with fishes. They were abominable. They repented at the preaching of Jonah, but man's memory isn't too long. So they went back to being the abominable critters they were. And Jonathan just read that scripture about how they were drunken. My understanding is that's actually how the Medes got into the city is they were there and they were drunk. They've been partying. Just like God said, and God destroyed the city because of their iniquity, because of their abominations, because of their sorceries, because of their witchcraft. God is just. Okay. Uh, Genesis 15 and 16, whoever had that one, but we look at that and we look at these societies and we're, we're going to come out of talking about this. I'm sure you've got the point by now that we are on a hamster wheel. Worldwide, city by city, society by society, culture by culture, we're all on the hamster wheel. But when does God say, okay, this is enough. Now I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to destroy them before they start infecting everything else. Okay, Genesis 15 verse 16. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, and the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. That's what I wanted. At that time, the iniquity of the Amorites was not yet full. It's like God is so precise, He's got His measuring cup out, and He'll allow a society to get wicked. He will allow, he allowed Israel, he allowed Judah, he allowed extra John for Judah, but he allowed them to have that time to repent. Not because God liked their iniquity, but because God was trying to get them to repent. And he sent prophets, and those prophets said to repent. He said, Israel, you repent, or the king of Assyria is going to come down here and he's going to scatter you to the wind. Can you imagine how that one ended? Because God scattered them to the wind. They didn't repent. Judah. Judah, that they were a little bit different. They went nuts in their religion. 
You understand what I'm saying? You read what was going on when Jesus walked in Jerusalem. You read, they were ready to kill him for breaking the Sabbath. Jesus said the Sabbath was made for the man. Which one of you have an ox that falls in a pit? Won't you go pull him out on the Sabbath? Isn't a man better than an ox? But they had gone crazy with their own man-made laws. Their religion made them nuts. And God did the same thing to Israel, to Judah as He did to Israel. But He gave them a space of time to repent. And when they did not repent, God sent the Romans in there. And the Romans leveled Judea. And they leveled Samaria. And they leveled Galilee. Because of the iniquity. Because of the wickedness. And that, that's an oversimplification. But I don't think you guys want to sit here for three hours for a history lesson. It, it really... It boggles the mind. Let's go to Ezekiel. And I honestly... I, Understand, I'm not saying that I am teaching on this tonight and now this is going to change history. But I want to show you guys what I truly feel is the key to what happens to these societies, including the one that we live in right now. Okay? Ezekiel, the 16th chapter and the 48th verse. This is the key. Now, I've got some quotes that aren't biblical to back this up. As I live, saith the Lord God, Sodom, thy sister, hath not done she nor her daughters as thou hast done, thou and thy daughters. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. And it's not what you think. Pride. Fullness of bread. Yes. And abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. That was Sodom's sin. Okay? And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. It has become so famous that we call it sodomy. Yeah. But that was not actually their sin. They committed abomination, sodomy, before the Lord because of their sin. It was well watered as the garden of God. You understand, you go out and you throw seed down, it grows, you've got bread, you can go party. Next year we'll do it all again. Throw your seed down, it grows up. There's no hardship in a society like that. They had water, they had food, they could turn it into booze. They could do whatever they wanted to. They had fullness of bread. They had nothing to worry about. There was no adversity. They had no reason to seek God. They had no reason to fear God. Yep. That's right. Ten years ago, the United States of America, if you was flat broke, you still had health care. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you was flat broke, you still ate. Amen. If you was flat broke and couldn't work a job, the government will take care of you. Why seek God in a culture like that? You don't have to. Unless you're worried about your soul. Unless you're worried about, uh, I mean, making it into the kingdom of God or whether you're worried about the lake of fire. Most people, hey, I wake up today, I'm good. I got food in the cupboard. I got I'm my Nintendo. I can go play my games. I can get on the, the internet. I got Facebook. Right. Yeah, easy. Fullness of bread and pride. And because of these, they committed the abomination. I promised you guys a couple quotes. 
This comes, I believe it was the second, if I remember it right, John Adams was the second president, right? I believe so. Anyways, nobody else knows either, so just assume I'm right. John Adams said, I must study war and politics so that my children shall be free to study commerce, agriculture, and other practicalities so that their children can study painting, poetry, and other fine things. And it's true, but that's part of the hamster wheel. That's part of the problem. The founding fathers were not all believers in Yeshua. The founding fathers were not all believers in Yahweh. But they were all still pretty good men. A lot of them lost their fortunes trying to create a nation that was free and that would bless generations to come because they thought it was their moral duty. Next generation? Next generation, we've got Andrew Jackson fighting over the central banking system. He won, but it came back in 1913. Would you like to know where a lot of your problem comes from? Would you like to know where a lot of the corruption comes from in our government? The central banking system. Which is why Andrew Jackson was fighting against it. So the, the, they did him a real good favor once they finally took things over. They put him on a $20 bill. I think that was their way of sticking their tongue out at him. They're mocking him. The same reason why the 50 cent piece, when it came out, was made of, uh, partially of silver and they put JFK on it. JFK was fighting for the silver standard. A couple years later, then they, they, there, there's a reason and he wasn't killed by some crazy communist out there. But All these things, we, we come into this where wickedness abounds Wickedness starts to rule and people aren't doing anything about it because they've got it too good. Yep. Now what's going to happen when you go to Walmart and there's no formula this week? That's not the question. What are you going to do next week when you go down there and there's no canned milk? What are you going to do the next week when there's nothing to feed your child? And the doctor says, well, what do you want me to do? People died because of wickedness. And our nation is full of wickedness. Our nation has so much wickedness stocked up that we export wickedness. Obama was out there trying to get these other nations to declare that it was okay to have gay marriage. And they told him, no, we're not going to do it. But we export wickedness. We've got these people right now worried about Roe versus Wade being overturned and everything else. And it's funny because in their cries that are reaching to the ears of heaven, they're finding out that liberal Europe is actually already more strict on abortion than the United States of America. You can't just go kill your already born baby in Europe. God is going to judge this nation. I believe it's time. I, I, I believe it's over for mankind to rule the earth. I don't believe the age that mankind is on the earth is over. But I believe, you know, you know, you got these crazy Muslims out there put the explosives on to blow themselves up and that they have their, their priest or whatever they call them over there and they run the government and they say, we have a theocracy. Bubba, I'll show you what a theocracy is. I'll show you what it really looks like when God is ruling the world. We will have an honest to goodness theocracy because our God will reign. Amen. It will not stay this way. We have to go through a time of hurt. We have to go through a time of cleansing. But He's going to return. I told you another quote. This is one that's been coming up a lot lately. I haven't read the book. Um, this was in his book, but it's G. Michael Hoff. 
is the guy that wrote the book. But the quote is, hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. And weak men create hard times. Welcome to humanity's hamster wheel. Yep. Do you know what would solve it? If they had just sought God. I woke up this morning and I didn't have to worry about what I was going to eat for breakfast. I didn't have to worry about where I was going to pitch my tent tonight or where I was going to sleep. Because God has blessed me with these things. Yeah. I have a roof over my head. But I'm seeking God. I'm not seeking the wealth of this world. I do what I need to do to provide for my family. I do what I need to do to keep my pookie safe. Yeah. But I'm seeking God. And God gives me what I need. And if they would seek God instead of the wealth of this world, God would give them what they need. But they have it in their head that it is their right to rule over everyone. To them, we are literally cattle and they've decided that there's too many of us. Do you really think there's a lack of an abundance of formula? Do you really think there's not a reason behind the lack of abundance for food? No. They've decided our time is up. And they think they're in control. <laughs> they're playing the devil's games that have been played since the beginning. Yeah. They don't understand but God. We're on the hamster wheel. It rises, it falls, it rises, it falls. But uh, Matthew 24 and 12. You know what? Skip that one. Skip, just skip that one. I've got way too many. Luke 17, 23 through 27. And they shall say to you, See here, or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning, that light that out of the one part under heaven, shine under the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. Okay. But first must he suffer many things, uh -huh. and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Okay, that's what I wanted. What happened in that time? God looked in the earth. When it's a society, God destroys the society. If it's a nation, God destroys the nation. If it's a continent, God would destroy the continent. We can talk about Atlantis if you want to. If it's a continent, God takes care of the continent. But the whole earth was full of violence. What's going on now? We have exported our sin. I think, the, I think the judgment is going to be harder on the United States of America than anywhere else. And people want to talk about how evil the Catholic Church is. They'll get theirs, don't worry. But there was a time, at least the Roman Catholic Church was against abortion. There was a time, at least they were against, let's call it what it is, child sacrifice. There was a time when they were against divorce. Are they wicked? Are they evil? You betcha. But they've got nothing on the United States. They started back in the 70s with the no-fault divorce, where you could divorce somebody because you didn't like the way they cooked dinner. There was a time homosexuality was considered a mental disorder. And now they've got some man that thinks he's a woman wearing some kind of Sailor Admiral suit wandering around over to Washington, D.C. I can't even remember what I... I mean, Attorney General, maybe? But anyways, we've got transvestites all over the place. 
Because when you open the doors to the insane asylum, they come out. We, we, we've got wickedness in them, enough to spare. We've got enough wickedness in this nation. We've, we, we've exported enough wickedness in this nation to destroy the whole earth. Mm -hmm. we, we've got fentanyl coming across the border right now in Mexico that's being manufactured in China. And there's enough fentanyl it, it, it's something I, I can't remember. Two, 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 uh, two kilos, something like that, would be enough to kill everybody in the United States. It's the it, it's uh, when you look at a penny in between the beard and the nose. I think it is of uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln. If you fill that up with fentanyl, it's enough to kill a full grown man. And they are bringing this stuff pretty much freely across our southern border. Because we have a nutcase in the White House that thinks it's a good thing to leave it open. But let's ship some more money to the Ukraine. Let's worry about Ukraine's borders. Don't worry about our borders. Bring it on, Bubba. Bring it on. My Lord's going to return. And this is going to be over with. But something over and over and over, and I've got more scriptures to move through, and I'm sorry, I know people are starting to get kind of uncomfortable, but I, I've got more to get through. But my point being is we are on a hamster wheel. We are just constantly repeating ourselves and repeating ourselves, and mankind does it over and over and over. But we've come back to the days of Noah. Yeah. Go ahead, Matthew 24 and 12. I know I told you to forget it, but now I wanted it. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Okay, thank you, churches. Thank you, churches. Because you know what? Because we were born Gentiles, we don't have to worry about the law of God. Because we are saved by grace through faith. Nope. That's what they have been preaching for the last hundred years. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. Iniquity is lawlessness. Yeah. Well, you know what? The divorce rate is as high in the church as it is in the world. Yeah. Why would anybody in the world want to come to God when their wife sucks just as bad? Twenty-two and twenty book of Revelation, I believe it is. I've got a bumper sticker. I didn't have the scripture printed out because I wanted people to open their Bibles and read it. But the point of that scripture is even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Because that's the only thing that is going to bail us out. That's the only thing that is going to save anything. The same chapter that Jonathan just read out of, Matthew the 24th chapter, we find out that if the Lord had not shortened those days, no flesh would be saved. Yes. Let's get to some good news. Daniel the second chapter, the 31st verse. Thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee. And the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest still uh, till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Okay, everybody thinks the statue is the star of this vision. The statue is not the star of this vision. Then was the iron and the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken in pieces and became like chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. 
Thou, O king, are a king of kings, for God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power and strength and glory. And whithersoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, the fowls of the heaven, hath he given into thine hand, and made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another kingdom, third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, so shall, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of the clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Okay, we, we read down through this, and I, I, I'd just like to remind you we're not getting into meanings or anything, but uh, you look at the vision in the book of Revelation, you look at the vision in the seventh chapter of the book of Daniel, and you read about the toes. How many toes does a normal person have on their two feet? Ten. Ten kingdoms. The toes of the statue goes hand in hand with the vision that Daniel saw in the seventh chapter of the book of Daniel. But the statue is not the star of the vision. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as the iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never... How long is never? Uh, forever. Never ending. That's kind of what I always thought. <laughs> shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. Amen. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountains without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, and the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain in the interpretation thereof sure. So when I read this, that mountain that filled the whole earth did not start out that way. When Jesus was here the first time, when he was born of a virgin, walked for 33 years or whatever it was, he planted the seed of the kingdom. Okay? Now, the, the, the Roman Catholic Church they, I don't know, I assume they still do, they used to teach that the, the thousand year reign was just the reign of the peaceful time of the church. That's not what the Bible says. But there was a time I was confused by all this because I wasn't just letting the Bible tell me what it says. I was trying to figure out what it says when it was quite plain what it says. There is a kingdom that is going to rule over this earth that is going to smash these other stupid people and their stupid hamster meal wheel and it, it's going to break open the cage. It's going to let all the hamsters out. And we don't have to run on the stupid wheels anymore. Yeah. Amen. We don't have to worry about who to vote for. Well, who's running next election? Yeshua. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what's going to happen? Who's going to succeed? He doesn't die. <laughs> He doesn't even age now. <laughs> Mankind, whether they want to or not, is getting ready to get off the hamster wheel. They're getting ready to get out of the cage. One thing mankind has proved to God, and they have proved to anybody that will watch, is that mankind cannot rule over mankind. Uh, you guys know who Oliver Cromwell was? 
Some no, yes, some no, okay. Oliver Cromwell was another one that was actually a pretty good man. And he ruled for his point of time with an iron fist over England, and England prospered. The problem is, he was a man and he died. His son was not a good man. At least not in the same way that the father was. So they go back. Oliver Cromwell, in their day, they got rid of uh, Charles I. Well, Cromwell dies. Junior's not such a good leader. They go to Charles II and they bring Charles II back in. And they've got the same mess they had before. You might have a good leader stand up on occasion. Think of Josiah. Not that one. Think of Josiah. Josiah raised up and his heart was after God. But the abominations had been committed. The wickedness had been committed. And God had had enough of Judah's foolishness. There are good leaders. But fewer and fewer of them rise to the top. Uh, I like what Nebuchadnezzar's told. I believe it's right before he turns into uh, like a beast. But uh, how God sets up over these kingdoms the basest of men. And I think, yeah. <laughs> like a Bill Clinton. Yeah, basest of men. But this is the hamster wheel that we are on. These are the things that we continue. Uh, Luke 17 and 21. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there. For the kingdom of God is within you. Jesus planted the seeds. You understand? Yeah. He planted the seeds. When He left, there was not a kingdom of God that we would look for in observation. And there's not going to be until He comes back. We see the church right now. The kingdom of God is within you. Yes. The kingdom of God is within you. Yes. But when Jesus comes back, we find out that they look up and they see this city, New Jerusalem. It's not a beat me up Scotty type of thing. It's not... Cloud heart, next. Cloud heart, next. We're not all going to float around on a cloud. Behold, I saw the new city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, which means we didn't go to heaven to get to the city. It came down to us. Yes. Because the kingdom of God on this earth will exist forever and ever. Well, you know, that sun's only got so many billions of years and then it's just like, poof, and it's going to burn out. The book of Revelation tells us we had no need of the sun because He is the sun. Yes. He is the light. Yes, hallelujah. We don't have to worry about, well, you know, the radiation that's out there in space. You know what? Don't sweat the small stuff, baby. <laughs> he spoke it into existence. Yeah. And right now, Right now, when he spoke this into existence, he spoke an atmosphere that doesn't just go up to where we used to think. It goes clear the moon is in the thin layer of the atmosphere because that atmosphere is absorbing the radiation that would fry us like a kettle of fish. Because maybe, just maybe, God knows what he's talking about. Go figure. Go figure. Colossians 1.13 Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness uh -huh. and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now see, th this is where I, I would like to go into Ephesians and I would like to take some time with this. That's the reason why I am not a registered voter. Because my citizenship is not with the United States of America anymore. I was translated into the kingdom of His dear Son. You see what? I'm just here right now waiting for my Lord to come back. So I can say, hey, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet Him. He has translated past tense. 
He's already translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. We have a citizenship that is not of these current kingdoms. Our citizenship is the kingdom of God. Yes. That's going to be interesting looking driver's license. <laughs> Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. That's a good place for it. Amen. Go ahead. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Yes. Counselor. Yes. The Mighty God. Oh, yeah. The Everlasting Father. Oh, wow, surely not. The Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government. Of the increase of his government. And peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. The increase of his government, there's not going to be any end. The end of his peace doesn't exist. He, he's going to allow mankind to do what he put mankind here to do to begin with. Now this is something else that's hard to understand. But give me James 1, 17 and 18. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Okay. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, uh -huh. that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Who's he talking about? We hear first fruits, and Christ was. When Christ resurrected, he was the first fruits. But now James is saying we are a kind of first fruits. What does that mean if we are a kind of first fruits? What does that mean coming after? The harvest. There's more coming after us. Yeah. This is not what you've heard preached your entire lives, is it? There's more coming after us. There is another time coming. And I believe it's not going to be nearly as difficult right now. Right now we're just calling out and we're trying to get laborers into the field. Right now we're calling out trying to get people to come into the kingdom. But there's more coming. We are a kind of first fruits. They never taught me that in Sunday school. <laughs> Amen. Luke 19, 16 through 19. And we're almost finished. They came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, hast thou authority over ten cities. If you read that in the common... Christianity dogma, that makes absolutely no sense. Think about it. It makes absolutely no sense with what we are taught in church right now. Be thou ruler over ten cities. What on earth are you talking about? Read a little more. And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. Uh -huh. And he said likewise to him, be thou also over five cities. Be thou also over five cities. Okay, Jason, you big dummy, you don't understand. That's just a parable. Uh, give me Matthew 19, 28, 29. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the generation, in the regeneration, re -generation. When the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, uh -huh. he also shall sit upon twelve thrones. Uh -huh, but it's just a parable. Go ahead. Judging the twelve tribes of Israel, mm -hmm. and every one that hath forsaken houses, uh -huh. or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or child, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Amen. 
these things happen in the regeneration. There's a time right now it just seems like things don't always jive with what the Bible tells us should be happening. But the reason why it doesn't jive is because you're not reading the Bible for what it says. This is what the Bible says. It's not a parable. Be thou ruler over ten cities. Be thou ruler over five cities. To whom much is given, much is required. To whom little is given, he's going to be beat with fewer stripes. But if it begin to a bunch and you fail, you're going to be beat with many stripes. That doesn't make any sense with modern Christian teaching. But when you stop listening to modern Christian teaching and you start reading your Bible for what it says, well, it makes perfect sense. It's a kingdom message. It's a kingdom message. It's not a heaven message. It's a kingdom message. Amen. Second Peter, chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. For the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, mm -hmm. and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Yeah, but he's going to come in like a thief and just steal away a few people. And... That's uh, not what I read anywhere in the Bible. Go figure. And the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Yep. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all, all holy conversation and godliness? What's it in perspective? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, Look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Amen. Amen. So we started this night out with, there's nothing new under the sun. What's going to be has already been. I want to end with Revelation 21 and 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Behold, he's going to make it all new. We're going to get off that hamster wheel. Doesn't matter what the corrupt politicians are going to do. God's got his, his remedy for them. God has remedy for all the corruption that's on the face of the earth. And we are going to enjoy peace in His kingdom. Amen. Okay.